thank you. Um, I'll start off now. Um, thank you for having us here. So um, today, um, I want to. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of um, Laraka people, which we meet today, and I would like to pay my respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. And I'll speak in Yungomata. Angololo bukmak ngarata buko korupan wang awatang ng malala kaya po na malas unay na proka mangi kumka o wang tipongor wang angor yung mangmak. I would like to um introduce myself. My name is Muta or Brenda in English. Muta. I'm a young woman from Northeast Arnhem Land, from Kalawinko, Alco Island. And I live and work here as my current role is Indigenous Young Lecturer of Young Studies, teaching language, the culture at City Kashwina in Darwin. Here with me, I would like to um, introduce Kali Kali. Um, Joy Burkana is, um, she is my wakko in the kingship system and she is a Jambarpung woman um, from North East Arnhem Land, from Kalawinko, working with us here as a lecturer and also a researcher here. We also have um, Nori Wawa Bangari. He is a young uh, team member and also a coordinator for for the Diplomacy Center here at CDU. And then finally, uh, we have Helen Baron Tamanjan Ngandi. She's been working with, with us, with younger people for the last 30 years. And she's also working at the CDU here in Darwin. Um, just like to introduce um, this you know, just to introduce the Yungo land, the people. Um, Yungo are the indigenous people of Northeast Arnhem Land, NT, in Australia. The major towns of Kalinko is Milingin, Miramangin, Kapuyak, and Yirtala. Uh, Yungo speaking in many languages. The Taruk, which is Yungo Mata, as a dialect. Right across North East Arnhem Land, everyone and everything is split into two moieties, which is Toa and Yiricha. So um, we speak several languages, different dialects in this area here as your language. So we got five minutes video about me and my people. So if you can spare with me. So um, thank you, I hope you enjoyed it. So um, just to introduce the Yolngo land and people, Yolngo, you know, so um, I'll start off by just saying this. So I grew up learning multiple Yolngo language, including English. This is um this is Yolngo country and people. I grew up learning multiple Yolngo languages, including English. The main language that I learned by speaking and learning was Tual, which belongs to many Tua clan groups such as Jambarpungo, Liagaumir, Dartiwe, and Japo. When I grew up listening and observing and learning other languages such as Tango. Jango and other Yolngo languages. When we Yolngo people 
borne through both eternal and parental lines, which we call Yarata. We are born with the knowledge of those languages. Our language is the flesh of my body, is the statement that Gaura Wanambe, one of our Yolngu col colleagues here at Charles Darwin University, said at that launch of the Voices of Country, Australia's action plan for the international decade of English language, 2022 to 2023. The land holds our language. They are in our blood who we are. Next one. Left. Yeah. Um, Bible translations and bilingual education. In the 1920s, missionaries, Palanda, or non indigenous people, came to Northeast Arnhem Land and brought the good news. The missionaries came and introduced Christianity to our people and country. My grandfather, Willie Kondara, was traveling with a missionary, Papa Reverend Harold Shepherdson and his wife, Ella Shepherdson, um, with living and exploring together. Ella became the first missionary in Elko Island, Kalyunko community, North East Arnhem Land. Missionaries in linguists did their research on Yolngu language with Yolngu elders, such as my grandfather, Willie Gondara, and Burumara, and Banga, um, Batanga, and other led elders and leaders at in Galavinko and also in Millinginbe community, one of the crocodile islands and learning from Yongo and talking to the elders and leaders to translate the Bible and the gospel into Yongo language, which was Jambarpungo, Tua language on Elko Island and in Gupapungo, Tuala language in the island of Millinginbe. For the first time, writing was introduced to our spoken and sung Yolngu language in those days on Elko Island. Good things for the orography, Balanda non jesus linguist sport in a in and mainstream education came along and taught us to read and write the sounds. In the 1970s, bilingual education started and language writing was used during that time when I was in the post-primary grades. Yungo teachers were working with Balanda and teaching us the alphabet of my language, how to write Yolngu vowels and constant, and reading and singing to them. My slide four. Yo. So bilingual in the 1980s development of the school at Elko Island in Gullivan, which we learn how to write and read the sounds in the post primary I grew up speaking several lang Yolngu languages, which were my mother's language and grandmother's language, main language I grew up with. When I hear Yolngu words and recognize them as Yolngu people who may speak quickly and their accent from other Yolngu language groups, we can tell the difference. It is important to learn how to produce each sound correctly. I wonder how the writing could capture the sound or the rirake. It's the rhythm, accent, 
and tone of your words or language. For example, the different um, exit of the Yolngo language were Kopapungu, Tuala, and Gumach Tuala. When I hear the Tuala language spoken by Gumach, the tone, rhythm, the accent of heavy and strong. When I hear the Tuala language in Kupapungu, the tone, rhythm, and accent are light, soft, and slow. That's how we hear, the Yolngo people hear the difference of the different dialect. And we have few samples, but it's too long, so I'll just go to the next slide. <clears throat> this one is, I care for both the sound and writing of our language. Now I care for the sound of our language as well as writing. Growing up, with Yolngu languages, I didn't worry about writing until the linguists came along and the bilingual education came to school to teach us to write the sound of my Yolngu language and have different tone, rhythms, scent, accents, so or when communi communicating to the Yolngu, to each other, I just want to demonstrate a few things saying like wawa, brother in our language, in different ways of saying it. There's a wawa with two dots, which is the long A, and there's another wawa as in you say it in different ways too. So now my problem is when I look up Yolngu dictionary or teaching materials that I use for teaching at CDU, it only shows wawa with two dots then I wonder how the different wawa or wawa or wawa can be written. This is the same in the Bible or bilingual education resource books. This question originally came up when I was marking students' assessments, came across some students writing wawa with two dots and some writings wawa without two dots. And I wonder how should I correct or how should I, I shouldn't correct? Yolngu language as country and people. The sound carries its meaning. It's, it, it will be best for my students to come and learn on country and communicate. I like the sound, reading and writing. They are all useful to me and also for students. Dictation practice is good for my students to learn by listening and writing. It helps them better understanding how speech sounds and expresses the meaning. I would like to finish my session by going back to Gaura Wanambi's message. Our language is the flesh of my body and my land. And I propose the word Yulngumatta should be translated as Yolngo tongue, as its meaning of matta is a tongue because our tongue makes the sound of our language, not the language itself. Thank you, uh, Billin. I'll hand it over to the next um, person, Joy. We just need to press. Thanks.
New afternoon, everyone. In this area, I will talk about <clears throat> my language. And my language is Tuwa. And I'm a Tuwa person. And I come from Alawinko, Northeast Kainam land. And my interstate's homeland is Muririkuro. And now we have to listen for um, the Rirakai, Manikai. <laughs> That sound that you heard, it is a, a older people, very, 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 very anxious. Um, the sound that comes up, that seagull left our language. And now these days, we hear the people on the ceremonies, different ways of doing things, different ways of um, the word and the town and the sounds comes out. But that music, that's Manike, the song by song from the older people of mine, very, very old people. And the sound and the language they are using, it's very, very old and we call it Purangai. No, no, I'm just going to let you know um, about the um, story that I told you, first part. It will be all on recording in Yongamata. And there's a translate uh, translations are uh, there in my own language more. There will be your mamata and again by English. Um Taharuk Karatulakaram. The Albilian Narakingal Yulmuwal Jember Pimo. More. Your Maracodarokia Dual Mill Dual Maracu Jamber Pimo P. Mukabaman Muran Naikan Limurbuk Mak Maringi Mondi Limurgan Mala Pamiro Alwangan. Kanga kulimur makin, kama ngi tinimur makin, ngakulimur kani yako, 
kabur oleh murkan ngaku dengan nyanyi rirakai kabur oleh murkan langal mayalit nan ngo nalcian ka nali nganapurkan maringitin tiaki daroko tual miriu daroko yoga diangun bala nakun nganapurka dukar malak maram nalcian nganapur tukung gayun tualacan romgor ngai kadara limurung bukmako parkoaj yorong ara inga doan jawanga kalakaram dia ribili ngarakin galian tual ngor kayon ngoi ngara doal kacambar pingo ngoro yor joe Kam tuali nakun ngarayan pelar merangal lakarangal ngurungun malangal nangai daruk mayali ngai kaya kungai kanati nyangai rirakai menmak Dual miliyongo ngay kadara kada gringor ngarakal chamber pungongor yolongwal yor ngay darokya ngoni dual yan kanguna ngay kadara Wipu mala wipu 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 mala yorongo tual mir mala wipu daruk ka wipu daruk ka wipu daruk yor ngana porongoni daruk ya tual mir Yor parkoaj Ngulin na matuka nga ma Nga ito daw at tunya ko tuwal Ngunili nga i Nga rako Kauwi pumala Tuwal Wala langga nguni nguni li bili dara yur parkoit nga napurong daruk ya ka parkoit nga napurong rira kanja nga itu tawatun ya nguni ngiri murung uli wanga Parkoit ngai Mayalin Nguruki darokun Pili Muni ngai kangura Ngatil baman Yul ngukan ninan Walalangin kalu walal Kana-kana Tarok to Ka Ka bilin na mga akol Ngarako ka Kumur Tarok Uripo yung dara Ang uli ni Turbutur Bikun may makum Ka mara mga nyan mayali Ka nga mga nyan wirakay 
but I need to see the difference from other dual medieval yule mual. Wanga Malaka Manapurung Bummar Murungi Mala Manual Marikin Wanga Kurunganapurungal Muninganapurkan Mari Walk Million Muruki Mala Munangaraku Wanga Bummar Marmai Marnai Pilidelling a Yngara Kalmarkin and Yurinja Ka Tarup Yanga Yuru Pangana Prun, Ka Jaraktun Murlaina Tualing Arakayan Mayali Mala Milkum Kalakaram Numalang Ripulku Tua Mala Mak ngai ka dua lipik yang dipilitara limurung buk mak. Yo namun na limuru group of dua people. Nina ka bala miringura. Our stations, ka communities, north east anam lan. Tuan yang ala kalakaram. Limurung goy. Ka barku wait limurung bumarin ya. Karulu Angdurya Marikin Larokya Karunya Nam Narli Murung Dua Kuriko Bapuro Palanya Nakun Lia Gaulmir Lia Galaumir Tatiwe Marango Chapo Lia Gaulmir Chankawi Pumarwanga Kalia Kalawumir Dati Wui Marnai Pumarwanga Marangui Chulwadak to Pumarwanga Yapu Marnai Pumarwanga Yang mereka tuan jalak keram bapuru, malam itu nama, nang ayakan unilingurat difference, kan nang ayakan unilingurat limurong yolmu tua bapuru, dua ling ayakan uni ayakan unilingurat limur kawicar ion bukmak tu yolmu. Limur tu macam itu nupaya man, limur ungu, limur yuta, yang jaga mar kuleu. Kadu aling ngai ngundi language very important. Limur tu right kuman yun ngunya walal. Nalce ngai kan ngacil nguran, kan nalce ngai bokmar, limur ung bokmakos. Kanal yang naik kata ada kumur limurong. Karena malah naik kangurang unilidi. Muna naik ke lakaram jalkri jalkri connection naik unil rakin naik. Tarang naik kalimurong wal naikan. Jalkri naik muna. Muni ngai guru pani murung. Wang abuk mana ingu guru perangai di murung. Yo muni madayul merakan marikin dan nali muka believe. Murung murui di. Wang ali murung wal guru per. Room wal ali murung guru per. Tarok wal ali murung guru per. Yur barco ait kungal, barco ait kungal ian. Wana wal, wana wal, wana wal, wana wal, wangalil. Kadaruklil. 
dualing ni tao ni moro. Yan nga dono pa yam taro klimbrong. Kadoan yang ngara inga kuro pandao ngara ko yan taro tuwal tuwal mir ngara dual yol mo yun ngara dual jambar pingo Murder Now, I'm just going to explain more broader and widely what you just heard and I have to show this diagram it's it's just a draft because back there I was talking about we should make it right we should make the language right these are the things that um, I've been learning with um, my people. Because I had seven fathers of one grandfather. So I learned, but I didn't learn deeply. I just learned the pathway, what and why I have to learn that. I was thinking about the food gap yeah, for the children. And now you can see the um, diagram there. For me, as a Jambarpingo person, I am in the middle. That's me and my father. And when you was hearing about the stories, another clan nations group like I was telling in my stories, they are around with me and they are all related to me. And that doesn't mean we spoke the same language. We've got our own different languages, but we are all connected in the ceremonies and for another reasons we are in connected just because all those are creatures beings that been gone through our land and placed and named our land and left something for us and that's why we are all connected. Tua and Yiritya. But our language is completely different. Our dialogues and the rhythm of the talks and the sound is completely different. And there, on my diagram, there are Tua Clan Nations people. And we are all dual Mirmala, but not the same like mine, dual. Different again. I'm just going to show you. And that's me. Thank you. So, what, what do you think about language or language? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, different dialect. Yeah. Like the strong one, big one. Like mild and much stronger one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And that's how it is for me. Even though I am Tuwa. And there's another dua group of people there in my um pedigree, but we've got different languages. Thank you.
My PP, I'm handing over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, yep, uh, Brenda, and welcome for joy. Um, my name is Yasunori Hayashi. I'm originally from Osaka, Japan. I'm working very closely with um, Brenda and Joy in the Yorongu Studies program at Charles Darwin University. As a coordinator and co-lecturer of the program, I like to inquire into what it takes to make an academic subject and stay true to the academic principles and commitment but also stay true to the Yolngu ontology of language. I highly appreciate today's Yearning Circle as an opportunity to attempt to give some analytical framework and name what and how I have been working with Yolngu authorities and their languages for the last four, 20 years, some 20 years now. They care for their languages as the flesh of their bodies and their lands as um, Gaura Monambi and my sister, just Brenda, just mentioned, and care for distinct ways of knowing dual languages as Wako Joy just um, presented. So Waimamba Gaikamongo, she's one of the founder of the Yolongo Studies Program, claims Yolongo was out to be found in hunting areas, funeral grounds, fresh water streams and seasonal winds, collecting and cooking giant focus with your kin in mangroves and mourning at funeral for your deceased kin in a dry season when the red flower of frozen trees bloom. So these significant participants in Yolong life enact ancestral reality with Yolong words. So how should we academics take this statement seriously? What matters in my sister, Brenda, Wako Joy, and Mukul Waimama's statement is the bodily sensations here and now in orality, articulating knowledge in the landscapes, activating through performance. In orality, promising a way of being instantiated as a country and as a material agency participating in a special temporal way of being special temporary event like trees, or winds and countries, maybe in a classroom, whiteboard and a table in a lecture room. So an American linguist, Alton Becker coined the term languaging. In his book titled Beyond Translation, Essays Toward Modern Philology, he claims that languaging involves all kinds of contexts, space, time, relations, nature, and emotions. This helps me usefully distinguish Yolongo language work from the concept of language as a given stabilized object as an instrument that often lacks ongoing liveliness and performativity. So what I'm going, what I'm working out to theorize and name is the ways how I do both language principles, Yolongo language, Yolongo Aboriginal language practice and Western language practice in university. What can help us stop committing ourselves to have the world out there and things still out there, but words over here and study the words and make meaning by itself. Meaning, uh, sorry, make meaning by itself in the language. As a modest mediator wanting to support young language programs with good faith, I like to propose my work is on theorizing the Yolongo ontology of language under the category of philology. A very long tradition of philology gives us its account, such as a truthful understanding of words in the Bibles, the art of reading slowly, the positive carefulness, cautions, and thoughtfulness in interpretation, or the art of reading well and also discipline of making senses of text. Michel Foucault 
sees the emergence of philology as the study of language for the totality of grammar, and the philology is constituted by the discovery of a dimension of pure grammar. So the orthodox understanding of philology can be something like it is a study of historical, grammatical, and textual criticism, and occasionally involves a detailed examination of text to deduce thinkers' original thought. The Oden Baker's concept of language, languaging certainly helped me move beyond the traditional discipline of philology that has essentially constrained a language as dictionary and a grammar over hundreds of years. However, the word languaging may be um, Maybe it's not strong enough. It seems to propose words as contingent and fleeting, but words for Yolomo are sacred and eternal, as you saw in a um, five minutes video in the beginning, me and my people. This way of approaching language and words seems to need a name with more weight to carry the load of launching academic study of, lang of Yolomo language work. The word we need should be much more serious, yet something vague and strong enough to bring your ontology of language to credible life in an academy, acceptable to both your knowledge authorities and academic linguists alike. My main proposal follows. Nobody agrees on what philology is, but they all have this vague sense of how to use it to name the doing of something serious. Philology is de derived from the ancient Greek philologia or philologia, philos, love, and logos, words, articulation. That's the love of words. Both old fashioned and modern philology is a rather vague category for studying language. But I claim philology can respect and take your own language ontology seriously. I'm arguing for supporting a revival of your own way of knowing language, languages and words in academia. So for more than 20 years history of Yolong studies program studied in, in the late 1990s at CDU, Yolong advisory group and lecturers who own, speak, sing, cry, love their languages, worked with and were always supported by non-Yolong academics, including me who had learned to speak and love the languages through um, committed study. Sharing your ontology of language in academy with higher education students and researchers is what your own lecturers, researchers are responsible with. So my job is like a midwife attending a birth, a supporting a role to allow your own philology to have its life in academy. In our indigenous language and culture class, classes at CDU, we see the teachers need to reinvigorate philology, love of words as a capacity to express experiences and the meaning and meanings of, hum, of being human in a myriad different facets, not the study of words as instrument object. Thank you. Um, can I pass over to Helen Byrne? Hello, and, and thank you to uh, my waku, my yapa, uh, and I'm Helen. Uh, I've worked with Yongo uh, in, mostly in Yarnam land. Um, for since, since really the 1980s uh, and um, so now I'm very pleased uh, to be part of the research arm of Charles Darwin University uh, and um, I'm, I'm uh, really here, I'm rather an imposter I'm not a language worker, I don't teach in the language program uh, but I, I am, I do have uh, a role in the um, in language work research uh, in the Faculty of Arts and Society. Now, I'm sure it's not news to everybody who's here, 
decolonizing is not a metaphor. Decolonizing is actually what we do in our institutions, how we make our institutional arrangements. Um, and uh, basically, I'm, I'm a philosopher, I suppose. I'm philosophy of language is one of my areas of interest, but I'm also, I started out as a philosopher of maths and through um, through considering uh, that big question of do numbers arise in language or do they arise in mind, I opted, of course, for the language uh, side and became, uh, in large part, uh, a philosopher of language. So as I see language as a research object in the academy, it's an epistemic entity uh, and we need to respect it as an epistemic entity and so this is why I really appreciate what Nori uh, has just said and I really uh, so much value uh, hearing how language was established and is uh, the flesh of the country and the flesh of the people um, and this this was brought home to me very early on uh, when I was working on a maths curriculum in the 1980s, actually, in Nirukala. Um And so um, it's not only an epistemic entity, uh, it's a politico-epistemic entity. And, so, and this is how... Uh, language gets connected to decolonizing, how we make our uh, institutional arrangements matters. Uh, and at CDU, uh, in FAS, Faculty of Arts and Society, we have two language research uh, arms. Uh, they are very separate. Uh, they recognize themselves as separate. Of course, they connect. I'm very pleased to be working uh, uh, in the uh, group which recognizes language as a crucial element uh, in diplomacy. Uh, and so recognizing language as this political epistemic entity that cannot be ignored. Um, and of course, we have uh, close ties with the top end language lab. But uh, this is, we understand ourselves as separate. Uh, we enact ourselves as differentiated as in an ontological sense. So uh, one of the things I think we need to do uh, to really uh, ensure that a decolonizing language ethos gets established uh, in the academy in Australia is look for uh, look for um, enterprises, research enterprises that are consonant. And so, I identify one of these in the work of John Searle. John Searle identifies his started off as uh, in ordinary language philosophy. Um, and he, as philosophers do, uh, has come up with this grand theory uh, about language as the first institution. And for his, in his view, language is, is the first institution of humanity uh, and uh, all civilization originates there. And he identifies that as beginning in intention. Now, of course, uh, what we heard today is uh, my Yapa and Wako. Uh, they have uh, explained to us how uh, the study of language is studying the intentions of the ancestral beings. So uh, a theory of language and institution uh, that is suitable in a diplomacy center, in a and in First Nations Diplomacy Centre, that is consonant with John Searle's uh, philosophy of language and institutions 
I think is something that uh, could really uh, ground uh, and develop Yolngo, uh, well, the research into these Yolngo understandings of language, taking them very seriously as metaphysics. So thank you.